Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Help. I'm Sharmila and this video is a continuation of page object model in Selenium WebDriver and the approaches using Page Factory. In a previous session, we saw how to structure a basic page object model design pattern using Page Factory class. And we also saw an example on how to use add fan by annotation in order to uh, declare your web element. Now, uh, in this session, we will be discussing about the rest of the annotations find buys find all cache lookup and we'll also see how to recognize a list of web elements using find by so in the previous session we only saw how to recognize a single web element using this annotation we'll see how to capture a list of web elements using the same at find by annotation now let's start with an example now here you can see i have an, i have a website called wikipedia.org and i need to read all the languages displayed here okay so for that, uh, I'm going to capture these web elements using a list. So you can see that everything is uh, inside a div called central feature. And these are the individual divs of each language. So if you look inside each div, the pattern is the same. It has an anchor tag followed by a strong tag. The pattern is the same. So I'm going to create a common XPath for all the languages displayed here. So this is the XPath. Anchor tag contains a class name called Linkbox whose uh, child tag is strong. So when I use this XPath, it returns me the list of web elements. So let me use this in my add find by annotation in order to recognize these and declare it as a web element list. So here you can see I have a class created for my Wikipedia homepage and inside that using add find by annotation, I'm using the XPath locator in order to identify my web element and then this I'm in turn naming to a list and the list name is languages. Since my list contains list of all the web elements and I'm, I'm uh, specifying its generic type to be web element right as simple as that so when it is a single element you just specify private web element web element name when it returns you a list of web elements you just uh, tag it to a list that's it and i and um, can also see I have a method wherein I'm returning the list. So in my test case, when I use this method, this in turn will return me the list of all the web elements, which is nothing but the languages that are displayed over here. OK, so now let me use it in my test case and print it and uh, print it in the console to see whether this is working. So here you can see I have a method. I'm using a test ng class So inside the add test method. I'm opening the URL wikipedia.org and using my object of my class wikipedia homepage. Okay, I've created an object for this. Using that object, I'm calling the method get languages, which in turn will give me a list of web elements, right? So from the list, I'm getting the size, which is nothing but the total number of web elements. And using the size, I'm just iterating over each web element and printing the text inside the web element. So get text will uh, just return you the content inside the web element. So when I print it, you can see that all the web elements will be read and uh, will be printed in the console. Now let me run this and show it to you. So the Chrome driver is opening my website and now it should print it in the console. Read all the web elements and print. Yeah, you can see that. My web elements are read. So homepage or get languages returned me the web element list, right? And from that, I got the text of each web element by iterating over each element inside the list. So you can see that all the web elements got trained and got printed in the console. So this is how at find by you can use it in order to read a list of web elements. Also, not only a single element, you can read a list of elements uh, using at find by annotation. Now let's proceed to the next annotation. At find buys. Okay. So here, when you have more than one criteria in order to recognize your web element. So your criteria is more than one in order to recognize a web element. So in that case, you can use at find buys. So this will have multiple at find by inside it. OK, and uh, when you are using the criteria, you should always make sure that the criteria you're specifying is inside a parent child relationship. OK, now let me uh, let us understand what is this parent child relationship in order to specify criteria for at find buys. Let me take it with an example. Now say I want to read this uh, search box. So you have lots of attributes inside it ID value class name, etc. So when you're trying to identify this web element using at find buys, you can't say like this. 
you can't say id equal to so and so name equal to so and so class equal to so and so which means all the criteria is falling inside a single tag that should that should not be the case it should be in a parent child relationship so it should be like class name is nav search field parent is one criteria and the second criteria should be its child its child may be this input uh, tag with attribute id whose value is 2 two tab search text box so that is how it should be the criteria should be in a parent child relationship so all the attributes all the criteria that you are specifying should not be in a single tag remember remember that it should be in a parent child relationship so in this case it should be like this wherein your parent class name is nav search field this one and your child tag name is field keywords okay so that is how your criteria should be ordered when you are using at find bys annotation so let us go with another example now here let's say i want to read all the female names displayed here okay so here i am going to use more than one criteria in order to recognize this and i am going to follow at find by sanitation so my criteria should be in a parent child relationship so i will go like this i will say i am going to have a class a table whose class name is c table so this is going to be my parent criteria another criteria is inside the t body there should be a row tag whose table data value is of index 3 so that is how i'm going to frame i will take two criteria one is uh, having a parent whose class name is so and so another one is having a, an xpath whose uh, xpath will be table body of table row of table data so i will have two criteria let me show it how so here i am just uh, comparing these two windows i have my uh these are my uh, web elements that i'm going to read so i'm using at find by sanitation i told that i am i'll use parent child relationship in order to recognize uh, my web element with more than one criteria so my first criteria is a table whose class name is c table so that is what my first criteria over here right second criteria is an x path which has table body with table row and table data of index 3 so that is what my second criteria you can see that the first one is the parent and the second one is the child so that is how my criteria is specified in a parent child relationship in at find bys only then it will recognize selenium web driver will recognize your parent and then goes to your subsequent child tags and looks for the second criteria okay you should not give all the criteria in a single tag you should rather put it in a parent child relationship remember that so now let me use use this in my test case and show how it works now i have a method which is just returning the names over here okay so this i'm going to print it in my test case to see whether uh, the correct order is read so you can see that i'm opening the url and then for my class baby names i've just created an object using that i'm getting the method get names which in turn will return me the list of all the web elements and from that i'm getting the size of the list and iterating over each element in the list to get the name or the content inside my uh, web element okay so get text will return the content inside my web element now let me print this uh, run this a chrome driver is opening the url and now it should read the female names yeah you can see that um, all the names got printed so here uh, baby names is nothing but the list of the web elements and from that i got the size and i got the content inside it using my get text method right so this is how you use at find uh, bys and next let's proceed with the next annotation at find all now this at find all also you use when you have more than one criteria in order to find your web element Uh, but here the case is your selenium web driver just looks for at least one criteria to be matched it is not compulsory to have all your criteria matching like find bys it should match only one criteria not it should match it can match at least one criteria or even more than one so that is how at find all works so in simple words i can say this follows an and relationship this follows an or relationship now let uh, let us see uh, when can we use at find all annotation 
now say i want to uh, read this user id web element i want to pass values to this so when i read this you can see i have attribute called name id class name etc so uh, i'm not sure which attribute i am i have to look for because some value is constantly changing when i look at this website its uh, attribute is constantly changing so i am just going to have um, identification technique wherein i say at least the name or id or class name one of the following should match not all but at least one should match if one matches just recognize that web element so in in cases wherein you get to see the identity changing very often for a web element you can use this at find all annotation so let us see how to use this so i will go for two two criteria now maybe name and id or id and class name for now now here you can see that i am using at final annotation in order to identify my username web element okay and here i go for two attributes one is id and another one is class name so i am using the same value as id username id the class name i have just deferred it to user id it is actually login user id i just skipped the login part and i gave user id to just show you that one is a matching attribute another is a non matching attribute and even then your web element gets recognized and the action gets performed because here the relationship is or wherein it only checks at least one of the following is matching okay so now let me um, run the test case i have an action called send key so i will call this method in my test case and see whether the action is happening So here I just have a simple test case, opening the URL and then calling the method called enter use username, which in turn will pass my value that I'm entering here. Okay, just to verify whether that web element is getting recognized. One is a matching criteria, another one is a non-matching criteria. Now let me run it. Run as test ng. Now the website got opened, and now it should enter the username value. Yeah, the value got entered. You saw that. So that is how you use at find by at find all annotation, wherein it checks at least one of the criteria to match in the given list. Okay. So you can add more than one, more than two criteria also. So this, so this is just an example. Uh, now next proceed. Let's uh, let's proceed with at cache lookup annotation. So when do we use at cache lookup annotation? So in cases wherein you use the same web element for lots of test cases. For example, uh, for every test case you need to log in. So you have to um, traverse your username, password, and login button for each and every test case. So in that uh, cases, or in those cases, you can just capture or mention those web elements as cache lookup. So once it reads that particular web element, the second time when it is trying to invoke it, it will not go back to the page and read. Rather, it will take it from the cache memory, which in turn. Increases your performance, test case automation performance. Okay, but uh, you should always be careful while using this cache lookup annotation because um, once your web element identity is read, if it changes in future, it will not update. Okay, because once it is read, it will just keep it in the memory and it will take it from there. So you should always make sure to use web elements whose identity never change in future. Okay, so that is how uh, you should uh, only to to those web elements you can apply this cache lookup. and uh, you can use this for at find all find by find by all these annotations you can use you, you should just prefix this to these annotations uh, so just let's have a look now so this is how you declare an at cache lookup web element so uh, you can mention any annotation in order to declare your web element and prefix to that you just mention this at cache lookup so this web element will be considered or put in the cache memory when it is taken in the first read okay i hope you got an understanding of all the annotations that we discussed in today's uh, session always have a um, practice of using page object model design pattern in your automation uh, the reason being it uh, makes your automation framework look simpler and it's also easy for you to edit in the future it is flexible for the user to handle uh, future test cases and also any new user who comes and have a look in your framework will have or get a, or get a um, easier understanding of all the test cases when you use this design pattern um so do you uh, use it in your automation framework thank you